We are a community of DevOps and security professionals who are passionate about developer and team productivity. Through our network, we promote DevOps and security practices for product engineering as an efficient method to keep pace with constantly shifting demands. Need of market is to have shorter, more frequent delivery cycles for software solutions that are secure and reliable. Our network promotes growth of members through De of DevOps professionals through mentoring, job opportunities, and collaborative learning to stay ahead. In this uh, webinar, uh, we will be covering mostly uh, these topics. Right? So, first would be the what is CI CD and DevOps. Like everybody talks about CI CD and DevOps, like you know, very few people knows what is the meaning and what is the difference between uh, these terminologies. So we will clear all the clouds around uh, CI, CD and DevOps. Then we will talk about what are the different tools uh, which uh, generally are used in CI, CD. Then we will go through uh, Jenkins installation, how to configure Jenkins, what are the different uh, plugins which are normally used. We will see some of the plugin configurations. Then we will also try hands on uh, installing some of the like you know tools like for example Maven. Then we will create a job uh, which will basically uh, do the complete CI, which will basically pull the uh, code from the repository. It will compile, do the unit testing, generate uh, you know, test report as well as code coverage report. Then in this process, uh, basically we will be using GitHub as a repository. So, as you might be aware, like in previous uh, webinar, uh, we have uh, covered the Git and GitLab. Uh, what are the different, you know, different actions uh, which we can uh, do for pushing, pulling, and you know, uh, committing uh, changes to uh, remote repository? Uh, then, uh, like you know, at the end, we will cover, like you know, what is a complete CI pipeline, uh, like you know. For a uh, which we can say like you know generally uh, industry uh, standards or like you know standard uh, which is followed in uh, creating a CI pipeline. So uh, first topic is like what is CI CD? So everybody uh, like you know interchangeably uses terminologies like you know uh, CI CD, but hardly very few people they knows whether. Uh, they are different terminologies and they are like you know used in a different perspective. So uh, let's talk about first the continuous integration. So basically, if we go by the definition, it is a practice of integrating changes from different developers in the team into a mainline as early as possible. In the best cases, several times a day. So if we say uh, like uh, if we uh, talk about uh, industrial uh, like you know uh, scenario so we have a source code uh, and so we, we have a multiple developers working together on a same uh, source code sometimes uh, 10 20 sometimes uh, this number goes you know uh, to 200 to 300 also and even beyond that so the Biggest problem uh, in this case is like you know everybody is uh, doing their code and you know uh, they are checking in. So, but nobody knows uh, what is the state of the uh, like you know uh, whatever they are checking in. So, whether it is compilable, is it breaking something? Uh, does it uh, you know uh, cover your code uh, coverage targets? So those kind of a things they are like you know uh, very difficult to. Uh, cover uh, using the traditional way. So here the CI comes into picture, which is basically a continuous integration. So right from uh, like, you know, uh, the developer does a code and pushes that change. So complete, uh, like, you know, different steps, like right from compilation to uh, unit testing. I know if you have some static code analysis that also is taken care, then, you know, uh, test report as well as other things they are also uh, covered. So this helps uh, like you know uh, individual developers uh, to make sure like whatever they are checking uh, that 
doesn't break anything onto the main uh, development or uh, like you know release branch so so basically if we uh, say in a layman terms it's nothing but it's a automated testing uh, automated like you know code uh, compilation and automated code coverage now if we talk about the continuous development so continuous development is somehow related to the integration it comes after the integration but uh, it's basically refers to keeping your application deployable at any time or even automatically releasing to test or production environment if latest version passes all the automation tests so what does it mean like uh, you have a code which is compilable uh, which uh, you know passes your uh, unit test uh, uh, criteria it also passes your code coverage uh, criteria correct so like if you have a 80 percent code coverage criteria and if your like you know continuous integration uh, passes that 80 percent then next part is how to test that uh, uh, binary which you have uh, generated from continuous integration so here the continuous deployment comes into picture so basically uh, whatever the binaries you have they are basically uh, deployed on test pre-production or production environment right and uh, all the other like end-to-end -end scenarios are uh, automatically executed so it's basically uh, make sure that your end-to-end -end functionalities on that uh, binary or that release they are uh, working and it does not break any existing uh, functionalities so it's all done using the automated test cases okay next uh, next part is the continuous stability which is uh, very much like you know similar to continuous deployment but there is a very uh, minute difference so we will just go through the first definition so continuous delivery is a practice of keeping your code base deployable at any point beyond making sure your application passes automated tests it has to have all the configuration necessary to push it into the production so basically this particular statement is the differentiator from the continuous deployment so continuous delivery is like you know you have all the uh, deployable binaries in your hand uh, correct and it has already passed your all automated tests but it needs to have all the necessary configurations needed to run into run it into, into the production environment correct so this is how it is different from the continuous deployment so normally continuous deployment means like you know you have a code which is deployable on the test uh, environment or pre-production environment on many of the times uh, some of the times it goes into the production also but continuous delivery says like you know you have a binary with, with all the uh, required configuration which are needed to run those binaries into the production so that you can push those binaries along with the configuration into the production environment right many teams then do the push changes that pass the automated tests into the test or production environment immediately to ensure the fast deployment deployment loop so if we see uh, from the perspective of uh, like you know uh, complete sdlc life cycle where the ci cd and devops come into the picture so if we see uh first one is the agile development correct which basically uh, is like you no know, you plan it uh, code it and then build it then comes the integration part which is a continuous integration so it's basically how to automate everything like you know how you automate once you have done the coding so basically how do you automate building your binaries how do you automate testing your binaries right and then is the next continuous delivery so it is a one step ahead of the continuous integration where you add how would you deliver your binaries for a release which will be deployed to the production environment okay then now comes the next uh, topic which is devops like you know everybody talks about devops uh, ci cd correct so and all three terms uh, many of the times look similar to each other so so devops if we say it's a dev devops development plus operations so it's uh, like you know one more step is added which is a operations so once you have deployed your binaries on a infrastructure 
how will you make sure like you know your binaries are up and running your hardware is up and running so for that you have to do the continuous monitoring and if something goes down you should have an alarm mechanism you should have uh, like you know uh, recovery mechanism so that comes as a operating part so that's where the uh, devops uh, like you know it's a development basically if i say it's a ci plus cd plus ops so here the ci cd and devops uh, you know, all to, uh, all together and combines the uh, chain so i think uh, this uh, should be fine if anyone has a question please uh, raise a hand or maybe they can just put it into chat uh, like you know we can take up uh, questions so this is what uh, ci cd and devops different from each other though interlinked to each other now uh, we will see what are the different tools which are generally used in ci cd uh, or we can say whole devops uh, process so if we see right from the uh, code so we have a like you know uh, git we have a jira and a conference so like you know here you have uh, how will you create the user stories how will you uh, write a code how will you push this code to a remote repository correct so that is like you know where this jira git comes into picture for requirement gathering you uh, you can use conference correct then uh next part is like you know uh build so build uh there can be a multiple build tools like you know you have sbt maven gradle uh some people also use ant so these are the tools which helps in uh building your code and the creating uh binaries out of it then uh we have a test phase where uh, like you know we use uh, j unit or selenium to test the code uh, so testing here includes both unit testing as well as in, includes the uh, like you know end to end testing uh, like in case of a gui you know uh, entering something and you know getting the outputs uh, in a automated way then uh, next is the release uh, where the like you know different tools like you know code ship and jenkins uh, they they are used uh, so it's basically like you know how will you uh, version it and you know how will you release it uh, then next part is uh, deployment so how will you deploy your binaries uh, your like you know uh, artifacts so here uh, dockers or like you know uh, aws or other frameworks or other like you know uh, cloud uh, uh, platforms comes into picture then next comes the operate uh, which we uh, talked about like you know operate and monitor are the two parts of our uh, ops part uh, from devs devops basically so here operate is like you know you have a multiple uh, chef ansible and kubernetes where like you know how will you deploy something how will you uh, like you know scale up scale down based upon the different uh, traffic uh, situations correct right? uh, how will you uh, install a particular software on a remote machine so these things can be done using ansible uh, chef or kubernetes uh, then next comes the monitor part. So monitor is like you know uh, what is the health of your uh, application, what is the health of infrastructure. Uh, if something goes down, you should get a notification. Uh, so alarms basically. So you have a different tools like Nagios, uh, Splunk is there, Datadog is there. They provide a knock kind of a functionality where you know you have a dashboard. If anything goes down, you get an alarm, you get a email notification, notification on your mobile, for example. Uh, using sms or you know, on app so that corrective actions can be taken you can also configure automatic corrective uh, uh, actions also uh, but uh, that depends upon uh, what kind of uh, uh, setup you have and uh, what of, what type of uh, errors uh, you have okay good so any questions till now uh, uh, if uh, like you know we can uh, always uh, uh, take up questions and uh, uh fine so recordings yeah definitely uh so there is a question from sai like uh, will a recording be shared yes recording will be shared so once this session uh like you know uh, finishes so we will record this uh, session
session and put it on our uh, like you know youtube channel so we will share that uh, link uh, after the uh, meeting okay so uh, if there are no questions then uh, let's uh, move to next part so now here comes uh, more hands on uh, than the uh, talking part so we will be uh, using our fingers rather than uh, doing <laughs> talks so so uh, we will be uh, using jenkins as we uh, earlier uh, said like you know the core of uh, ci or cd devops is the jenkins here so we can download jenkins from uh, different let me just uh, share my screen so that uh, everything is visible. Okay. So this is the like you know official site of uh, Jenkins uh, where we can uh, get the details, but we are more interested in downloading the uh, Jenkins. So Jenkins is available in multiple forms. Uh, you get a Docker image, so you can run it in a as a container inside a Docker. Uh, for different Linux uh, environments, you have a like you know as a uh, RPM, like you know those kind of a thing. And uh, one of the most uh, favorite or like you know uh, people mostly use is the generic uh, java package which is uh, war uh, which can be basically uh, like you know you can just run it on a command line or you, you can put it into a tomcat and uh, use it so you can download uh, this jenkins.war so i have already done it so just to save the time uh, just So once you download, uh, you will get this Jenkins.war, correct? So for simplification, uh, I have just created a small uh, batch file. So I will just show you the content of this uh, batch file. So okay. So basically, like you know, if you want to run it using the command, you just need to run this uh, this particular statement. Uh, you just run this and. Uh, Jenkins will start uh, installing and you know it will uh, unzip its content and uh, it will start but uh, just to add uh, more thrill to it so we will discuss some of the uh, like you know how we can configure uh, Jenkins while installation so here we have used uh, two part uh, so if you want to uh, by default like you know uh, Jenkins goes into the user directory and there uh, it uh, starts unpacking itself into dot uh, Jenkins folder. Uh, but for example, if you want to do it in somewhere else, correct? Uh, you want to do it in uh, your local folder. So how we can do uh, or some custom path. So for example, here uh, we can define this uh, environment variable, uh, which is Jenkins home. So you can give it any folder. So here I have given it uh, home directory. So if I see, uh, if I create here home directory, uh, time. Sorry, uh, it will create itself. So uh, basically, uh, you can give any path. So for the time being, I am giving a folder here in this folder itself. Right. So once this uh, Jenkins will start, it will take this folder and it will unzip it uh, itself there all the plugins tools whatever jobs you create they will be stored in this folder similarly like you know since i am using a window so that's why i'm giving this way if you are using a linux then uh, you can uh, like you know use this export uh, command uh, to set the environment variable then here uh, i'm using uh, port so basically whenever jenkins starts it's using 8080 as a default port so i just wanted to show like you know we can also change uh, port uh, to some other values for example if you have some service which is running in your machine with 8080 
and so uh, in that case jenkins will not uh, and it, it will say he port is already bound so in that way we can give it a different uh, port also so uh, so let me start it uh, the script so now you will see lot of things happening so basically this war file is uh, deflated and you know it will start uh, extracting the contents from it uh, so now if we see uh, it has uh, uh, this is how it starts so it will start uh, extracting itself and then it will do some basic uh, like, you know configuration and thing so let it uh, go so uh, one of the characteristic of uh, Jenkins is that like you know it is a very basic uh, tool so it's all depends upon the plugin so whatever functionality you want you have to install corresponding plugin for that without plugin it will not uh, work correct right? so now if i see first time when you load it so uh, earlier versions like you no know, they had admin admin uh username and password but now they have uh, they generate a random number uh, during the startup itself so now it says like you know jenkins is uh, first uh, installation of jenkins is done so we need to log in so if i say we need to log in here uh, default is local host now default port is 8080 but since we have changed the port we need to give this port now it will ask for uh, that secret token which it has uh, generated okay. so this is the token i have just copied it so even if uh, you just forgot to copy or in sometimes like you know running in linux uh, these commands uh, run in background so it will tell you where to look for this initial admin password correct so i have just copied it so i will just paste it and then continue it so it will do some uh, magic behind now as i earlier uh, explained like you know jenkins is nothing but it's just like you know a, uh, a bouquet of uh, plugins uh, you can choose plugins you can install uninstall like you know manage plugins so during the initial customization or installation of jenkins it will ask you to install the plugins so if you know the plugins like you know you can use the custom uh, thing it will ask the complete list and then uh, you can choose whatever you want but for uh, simplicity we will go with the uh, default plugins so these are the plugins which uh, jenkins uh, installs by default so it will take some time so if we see like you know uh, git is the one plugin which is used for like you know uh, uh, talking to the external uh, uh, git repositories for example gitlab github correct then we also have a support for ldap if you want to integrate your jenkins with uh, you know, companies ldap server or ad server so that can also be done uh, then we have a uh, mailing plugin so you can configure and you know you can send the uh, mails like you know if build passes and you can send the email to the group of people like this build has passed uh, if build fails then you can use this email uh, uh, extension to send the failure notification so similarly like you know there are multiple uh, plugins so if you see like you know uh, as we discuss what are the different uh, build tools by default installs ant and gradle but somehow this default place uh, misses the maven so we will see how to install a like you know uh, maven kind of a tool so uh, let it finish it will take some time so we will come back to our uh, slide and see uh, so this is what we have covered how to run the jenkins so this is a very basic command if you want to run a plain vanilla jenkins with the default configuration so this can easily uh, be done but if you want some kind of a customization you can follow uh, like you know how to change the port how to 
change the like you know uh, default home path correct so i just uh, like you know talked earlier uh, there are two ways to run this war file uh, you can put it into a tomcat server so like you know tomcat server will basically take care of starting stopping it correct uh, and other is uh, like you know you can uh, copy the jenkins war and just run it on uh, using java minus jar uh, like uh, this command so this will uh, start in a uh, command line so it will have its own uh, container running so there are certain uh, like minimum uh, configuration uh, required uh, so jdk 1.5 and above uh, is required and uh, minimum uh, memory to run it is 4 gb so like you know you can run in uh, 512 uh, mb of ram also but uh, if you start putting into more plugins and more uh, jobs and functionality then at least like you know 2gb of ram is recommended but if you want to build a bigger uh, like you know complete ci ct server then uh, like you know 2gb can also be uh, less so in that case like you know based upon what kind of a functionality you are adding what kind of plugins you are adding you can increase it but minimum 2GB RAM is uh, required for proper functionality of the Jenkins. So now let's see where uh, our plugin installation is. So I think uh, most of the uh, plugins they are already installed. Uh, anything else? Any plugin specially which we will be using? Uh, I think we have already talked. Okay, now. Uh, Hmm. So this part we have already uh, uh, discovered, like uh, we have already talked about how to uh, use a default uh, admin password to uh, create the uh, username and password. So basically this will unlock your Jenkins for the first time, then uh, you can customize your Jenkins using uh, like you know uh, selective plugins or you can go with the default plugins. Okay, now after that, next step comes like you know, creating users for the admin uh, administration of Jenkins. So, uh, yeah, now we are back. So, here we can create the administrative uh, users. So, the earlier ad, uh, password which we this, uh, got in the like you know, that particular file or in uh, logs that is only for the first time uh, unlocking of jenkins so basically once you install it only then that is used after that that is not used you have to create your uh, admin user and using this user only you will be able to log in so let's say uh, let me create admin admin uh, password we uh, we can keep admin uh, just uh, use basic admin admin .com. then So now it tells like you know, how we can uh, access this server. So already we are uh, using it, so uh, nothing to do. So now here it says that uh, Jenkins is ready. Okay. So uh, till now I think uh, whatever we have covered. Uh, it is okay so you are still uh, like you know if any queries is there or uh, if you feel any issues with uh, like you know uh, screen sharing uh, please let me know uh, we can uh, resolve it uh, let me just see if there is anything on the chat okay hmm. so i hope uh, screen is visible uh, everybody can see it uh, in case of any issues like you know uh, windows not visible or uh, something uh, please just uh, message me on the chat we will start it so if we see what is the overall jenkins uh, so here we have uh, like you know uh, left menu uh, then we have a top menu and uh, some basic stuff so we will just go through each and every uh, section which uh, is needed for creating a ci pipeline so if we see here uh, in plugin uh, in people you can add more uh, users like if you just want to uh, you can do basically the user management then 
this is the most important part which is the manage jenkins so here if we see there are multiple sections uh, for simplicity we will just cover two three parts and others we will just uh, talk at a very high level so first part which is very important is the manage plugins so uh, as we earlier uh, talked like you know jenkins is nothing but uh, just a bouquet of plugins so whatever plugin uh, you uh, add it to this bouquet so you can uh, use that functionality so if we see uh, if you click to this available tab then you will see there are lot of uh, plugins which are available so these are all uh, listed in the uh, jenkins site uh, so it is taking little time so okay so we will come back to it so here we can also see the list of installed plugins so these are the plugins which are already installed uh, if you want you can install a particular uh, plugin also correct but if you want to install a one uh, plugin so they are like you have to go to the available list uh, there like you know uh, some of is taking time so it will show the uh, list of available plugins you can choose it and then you can install it so i think there is some issue uh, let's see uh, uh, okay now probably the list is too big it's not able to show for example if i want to install uh, let's take this docker api correct uh, or say for example monitoring so here i can select this one and uh, hmm. Okay. probably this is not loading but uh, once it loads then uh, you get a button to install it so you can install it and then uh, that would be uh, available for uh, use okay so we will come back to this uh, again uh, we already have a git plugin which we want to use it then uh, coming back to uh, manage jenkins uh, then we have a global tool configuration so here uh, we can basically uh, install different tools correct for example jdk if uh, there is no jdk in your system you can install jdk from here you can uh, install git you can install gradle so these are not plugins these are a kind of uh, tools uh, right which uh, need to uh, be integrated to a different way for example let's uh, we want to integrate maven so uh, so there are two ways correct so if you have an internet connectivity to your uh, jenkins server so in that case uh, like you know you can choose this uh, install automatically so you just uh, give a name uh, maven default for example and you know, uh, just uh, save it and it will uh, install once you start using it but if uh, you have you are in a system where you don't have a internet connectivity so in that case you can do a local installation so here you can uh, basically add maven through this one correct uh, delete this one so here you can tell where the path of your uh, maven is so in that way that can also work so but uh, for the time being uh, we will just go with the uh, default one where it downloads from the internet because we have an internet connectivity right so we apply it we save it applying and saving it doesn't mean that this plugin will automatically be installed this plugin will only be downloaded and installed when we start using it right so uh, now come back to the main page so now we will talk about how to create jobs now we already have a basic plugins uh, which is get which we needed then we uh, have a maven build tool which we would be needed so now we come to the how to create a basic uh, uh, plugin a basic job or sometimes it is also called a project so say test hello 
so we will be using a freestyle project so there are different types of projects available so freestyle is uh, uh, majorly used where you can you know uh, uh, basically use a plugin based uh, uh, functionality then there is also a pipeline where basically you have to write a script using like you know groovy script and those kind of a things so that becomes very tedious for uh, learners or like you know even for experienced people because uh, remembering scripts and you know syntax that becomes a very tedious part then there are multiple uh, parts like you know, this is a multi branch pipeline like you know if uh, you have a uh, code from uh, one repository but uh, you want to pull the code from multiple branches so that is also possible so but we will go with the freestyle project So now if we come to this page then we have uh, these uh, different tabs so we will just go through these uh, tabs and see what are the different uh, meanings so first one is the general like you know if you want uh, whenever the job runs it basically creates multiple uh, run instances so like you know if you create a first run it will create a folder one and you know put all the binaries generated and you know whatever code it fetched it will put into that uh, folder number one number two same number four numbers you know seven and eight when this number starts increases then uh, your like you know system memories uh, uh, available hard uh, disk that also uh, uh, starts uh, come into picture so you have to limit it sometimes like you know say i can only keep 100 uh, builds or i can only keep 10 builds so there this will help like you know it will help in uh, rotation so you can tell like you know how many number of builds uh, you want to keep for example 100 or if you want to say like you know i just want to keep the builds which are uh, for example say 10 days uh, uh, like you know old beyond that i don't want to keep so those kind of a things you can configure here so there are other parameters like you know uh, you can uh, advance uh, you can tell uh, if uh, uh, this build is started how many times it should retry then you know uh, uh, these kind of a things which we will uh, cover uh, during our uh, next sessions next part is the source code management so source code management is basically uh, how will you uh, pull the code so here like since we already have a git so here you can uh, use the uh, like you know git repository or gitlab repository to uh, pull code from so this plugin will basically pull the code whatever the url you provide here uh, of course credentials and those kind of things and also the branch so it will pull the code into the workspace of jenkins and here all the builds and you know unit testing and everything will happen so let me just uh, uh, pull one code uh, this one we have covered this is also covered uh, so there is a uh, one uh, basic uh, project already available which uh, we are just uh, using because it's very simple java program so here we will just provide the uh, url of uh, repository since this is a public repository there is no credentials we will leave these credentials as it is otherwise you can create you know uh, credentials like this uh, you can provide username password uh, of the your uh, git uh, repository Correct, and uh, if uh, you have a token based or like you know certificate based access to the repository you can use the corresponding uh, option so for the time being uh, like you know uh, we will keep it simple uh, this is the git uh, url uh, then uh, we will uh, play with the master branch so next uh, section is basically uh, how to trigger the builds uh, though we will not be covering this part as a part of training but we will just touch uh, like what are the what this concept is so many of the times what happens like you know somebody checks in the code and uh, you want like you no know, build should be automatically triggered so this is here that uh, comes into picture uh, so you can uh, configure like you no know, if you say a build has to be built overnight correct uh, every 12 uh, or uh, pm or am whatever it is so you can just uh, give the schedule here correct 
or if you want uh, some github uh, or gitlab trigger to trigger your uh, job that you can also uh, configure here right or if you just want like you know uh, your jenkins should always pull the scm if uh, new code is available on a branch so that that thing also is possible so you can schedule it uh, it will pull the your source code management tool and it finds a new code it will just uh, pull the code then next part is the build environment uh, so this topic uh, uh, this section basically like you know tells how to uh, set up the builds like before uh, build uh, should you delete uh, your workspace or like you know those kind of things uh, how should the cleanup thing uh, happen if some environment variable you want to introduce to the build that can be added now the most important part is to build the code correct so here uh, there are different uh, ways to build the code so one is like you know you can use a batch uh, like you know if you have a java minus c kind of a thing uh, if you have a uh, uh, you can also use a shell if you're running on uh, linux if you have its uh, build tool is and then you can use ant gradle and those kind of things since we have this project which is based on maven so we will just use uh, maven here we can choose the maven which we uh, like you know, installed as a part of uh, tool configuration and uh, as you might be aware uh, like you know there are certain uh, goals which we need to provide uh, to run it uh, clean install test so uh, all those who are not uh, aware of what are the maven uh, goals so basically maven goals are the statements which tells the maven tool to uh, like for example clean it will clean uh, all the temporary files like dot out file dot exes which are generated as a part of uh, build itself uh, then install will basically uh, compile all the code and it will generate your artifact maybe a exe maybe a war uh, depending upon whatever you have configured in the uh, maven uh, configuration file which is a form file test is basically if you are telling maven to execute the test cases uh, unit test cases correct so uh, there are other options also you can uh, explore like in advance uh, uh, where is a pom file and going, uh, kind of a things since this is a default so everything is there uh, we will not touch uh, any things okay now the next part is what will you do after the build is done your test cases are run that is you need to publish your reports what was the like you know uh, test cases you have executed what was the status of those test cases so here uh, we can publish like you know in uh, as a part of build we have executed tests which basically trigger the j units so here we want to publish the test reports correct so we will say uh, uh, I will just uh, tell you why I am writing this uh, straight away once we run it. Uh, correct. Then save it. You can save it. And now the first part is ready. Now we will see how to execute this project or this job. So here we have a button which is like you no know, build now. So it will start the job all the job logs uh, we can see like you know uh, once we start running it uh, so basically you know numbers will increase one two three four so these are these tells a build history and if we go and click this uh, bar uh, basically it will take us to uh, the console outputs now if we see here what is happening since we don't have uh, we didn't had the maven it is trying to download the maven tool from the internet but if you run it uh, next time maven tool is already there it will not do it so if we just go and uh, meanwhile uh, see what are the different uh, options here so this basically change summary will uh, tell you what has changed since the last build since like uh, uh, this is just a dummy project so this detail is not coming so whenever somebody puts in a change uh, they tell like you know in comment like this is why we are changing this uh code so that summary will come here correct uh, obviously console output uh, we will come back to it uh then it will uh like you know you can change the build information so uh, uh, we will not doing it 
so this is the one uh, which tells uh, like you know which basically pulls the information from gate uh, what release number or which commit id you are compiling uh, what is the branch uh, remote branch which you have pulled correct right? which branch basically you are compiling so for example build number one we have uh, pulled master branch and this is the commit id so this is what we are compiling as a part of this example so now coming back okay so tags if uh, we had a tag uh, so like you know in this we had a tag so you know uh, in the code so that would also be pulled so now coming back to the console output since it is just pulling that uh, uh, maven file so uh, let it continue uh, in the meanwhile we will just come back and see what we have covered so uh, this one we have covered uh, how to uh, configure the maven targets how to publish the test report okay uh, okay now coming back uh, it is taking little time to pull so basically here if we just try to debug what is happening so jenkins is basically trying to download this maven 3.6.3 zip file correct from the maven repository and it will unpack it locally correct uh, to this path which is uh, we have given the home directory correct and once this uh, uh, installation is done it will start with the next step okay so meanwhile uh, we will just uh, go back uh, because first time it will take time it is it has to download the things and you know other things meanwhile we will just come back and uh, see what we can do with the job so here we have a workspace since uh, whatever the code it has pulled you can see it here so it's a local copy of the code so here we have a uh, two java files correct then some uh, test files which contains the junit test cases okay so this is what uh, jenkins has pulled from your remote repository okay so uh, build now we have already seen uh, configure if you want to do some configuration uh, changes to your build you can configure it correct and uh, once you save it uh, it will be done uh, obviously the rename if you want to rename your uh, uh, job so you can uh, rename it correct so now i think uh, still it is doing something uh, now it has moved to the next part which is like now it is compiling the code so if you see now it has uh, started uh, maven build so uh, so different uh, targets are being executed uh, it compiled it you know, compilation is happening uh, so if you see two files were there so it has compiled both now it has started with the uh, j unit testing so now you see uh, tests are being executed so i think uh, some of the test cases they will execute once they are executed then this job will finish successful or failure depending upon what happens like here uh, build is successful but publish reports not found so we will see intentionally we have done it so see uh, i will show you what is the problem so till build everything is fine so build wise it is okay but uh, overall goal of techno like, publishing the report that didn't happen so now if we see so test reports they are uh, generated in uh, this folder so these are the test reports which we need to provide so i think so i will just copy the path go to the configure and i will just paste it start off so now i will save it i will rerun it now uh, now if you see this time uh, 
uh, if we rerun it it will be very fast because it already has the code from the repository since nothing has changed so it will not pull again right if uh, something must had changed then it would have taken the delta uh, maven plugin it's not needed because it's already installed so you know it just uh, started compiling and uh, uh, testing it so here uh, i will show you the status uh, of test cases uh, okay so now it is done so here in logs also you can see uh, two test cases and you know, no failure and nothing skipped so if we just come back so here go to this execution here the you have a test results so these are the j unit reports here you can see uh, these are the test cases which which uh, passed or failed correct so then you have a overall history like you know uh, nine test cases they passed nothing failed correct uh, fine so here you can also see the history of the test reports in uh, form of uh, graphs so now i think uh, we have covered almost uh, 60 70 percent what people they do in ci so what is now left is code coverage correct so now we have a j unit but the code coverage is uh, left so for code coverage we will be using jacoco tool so for jacoco we need to install the plugin so again we will come back to manage plugins uh, go to the available we will just search the jacoco because this is what we need okay so now here uh, there are two options you can install without restart or you can download now and install after restart so let's see uh, one example how it works so now what jenkins will try to uh, do it will go to the jacoco site it will try to pull the plugins and it will try to install it now we need to install uh, restart the jenkins correct right. so for that there are two ways uh, some of the times what happens so you can just give the restart and uh, you know uh, it will uh, restart it but since like uh, uh, it is not restarting so we can just stop it and uh, just uh, start it again from that file okay. so uh, i think we are close uh, to time but uh, i think we can finish in uh, five minutes it's the uh, last topic which is left so it takes some time to restart it so Now coming back to uh, installation, uh, this one we have covered. Okay, test reports we have seen. Next part is to install the Jacogo plugin, which uh, we have just done and uh, restarting the Tomcat. Okay, so now uh, we will log in with our credentials. okay now we will uh, since this plugin is con uh, already configured so we will be able to see those plugins as a part of uh, job configuration so yeah, just go to job configure job and uh, we will go to the post build actions so here we will record the jacoco report okay so i will just copy the path from uh, here did i think okay so default path is okay let's see you see here you have jacoco exe okay so now we can just build it and see how it works so best uh, thing about Jenkins is like, you know, you can uh, just try and 
just see it it will show you whatever uh, it has done uh, through logs so uh, logs are very intuitive developer you can just go and uh, see what is happening actually so we will now just uh, consider uh, how the check coco is doing okay j unit done no test case failure okay so now if we see here so it has uh, tried to search the path which we had uh, given so though like you know, it's a standard projects so all the paths were uh, already there so we did not modify any paths so it just uh, picked the uh, java code coverage uh, file so if you see here now it shows the code coverage so if you see instruction wise 96 percent code is covered branch wise 100 percent code is covered if you want to see the more uh, detailed uh, uh, <coughs> report so it will show you here so here if you see the number of lines uh, which are covered are 25 because it was just a small hello world kind of a project and number of missed uh, lines are zero so uh, once you run multiple uh, you know, cycles or like you know, uh, builds of this job so this will show you graph like you know if code uh, you start adding code without uh, adding unit test case then this graph will go down and like you know if you add corresponding test case then obviously like you know this graph will uh, grow upwards so these are the like you know uh, default plugins or uh, basically plugins itself they add uh, these uh, items to the uh, jobs dashboard so here you can see test results like you know you had uh, these eight uh, test cases or nine test cases and uh, this is a trend uh, for three builds uh, they all have been passing if any of the test case failed then there would have been a dip and you no know, change in color to uh, tell what is the uh, status like if you want to go and see jacoco report in more detail uh, <clears throat> then here we can click it will show you like uh, which file which function and you know uh, and which part of code has been executed for example if we see this is the executable uh, uh, lines which actually are uh, actual code uh, lines of source code of line so these greens matlab, uh, these have been executed and if there was some unexecuted or uncovered code that would have been uh, colored with uh, pink color so if we just go and see more details similarly like you know, we can go so this is the like you know uh, overall uh, ci cd uh, not ci uh, cd only the ci part so these are the like you know different perspective of reports how we can see from the top level then from the file level and then uh, at the function level so like here if you see uh, this uh, pink color means like this line has not been executed so that's why our code coverage is 96 percent if this this was green then it would have been 100 percent so this is how uh, like you know uh, you can tell your developers like you know this like uh, this piece of code has not been executed write a unit test case for this piece so that your code coverage can increase so so any question till now otherwise uh, we will come to the uh, last topic uh, which is the uh, like you know uh, how the full fledged uh, like you know continuous integration systems looks with uh, different tools uh, what is the flow so we will just cover the flow so here if you see uh, uh, this is the developer as soon as he checks in some code correct uh, using the merge request then uh, basically uh, GitLab triggers a event which goes to the Jenkins and then Jenkins basically pulls that code correct uh, because it detects something has been checked in so it pulls the code and then it triggers the code inspection so this is the step which we have not covered here so code inspection is like you know you can have a static code analysis which will identify security vulnerabilities or like you know code syntax errors and those kind of things then once that is done we can go for 
j unit this is what we have done we have uh, used j unit uh, similarly like you know there are multiple frameworks like you know jasmine and karma based upon what type of project is for like you know angular you have a angular js you have a jasmine or karma then uh, using the code coverage uh, six step uh, which we did using jacoco similarly like for we uh, like you no know, angular uh, kind of a thing you have an istanbul uh, that can that is triggered and then uh, there are certain security uh, scans which you can uh, basically trigger for external dependencies what are libraries you are using in your project so this uh, tool will basically uh, scan your all the libraries and uh, give you vulnerability report uh, though we have not covered this topic but like uh, since now we have a code coverage uh, like in our case we had a 96% unit test cases we had uh, nine test cases and nothing failed but if you want to uh, put a checks like you know if code coverage is for example less than 70% uh, if unit test case fails then you can stop that code correct right? or uh, you can send a notification to the end user that your code is not in good shape please correct the code and check it again so those can be done using the quality gates uh, checks and everything goes fine then you can package your uh, code uh, using like you know npm or maybe in, uh, in terms of uh, war file or like you no know, you can also use a uh, docker to create a docker image then you can store uh, these artifacts in artifactory uh so that like you know uh, somebody wants to use it for uh, their uh, continuous uh, delivery or continuous deployment they can pick their builds from these artifacts and at the end you can send the email notifications to the recipient uh, it can be a developer or it can be their lead or it can be the whole group that uh, your uh, build has been successful or it has uh, failed so this is the like you know overall continuous integration uh, using jenkins for uh, gui plus backend project which are very uh, gen, uh, like you know almost 70 to 80% projects or sometimes like you know, 90% of uh, projects fall into this category so if uh, we are able to uh, cover all these uh, aspects then we can say we are uh, like you know expert in continuous integration so uh, now the house is open uh, to all uh, let me just uh, uh, if any of you have any query uh, uh, we can take up those queries uh, just put it your uh, queries on chat uh, so that uh, like you know, we can uh, pick up questions so by the way uh, we will be uh, putting up this uh, uh webinar recording on uh, youtube uh, so that you know you can go back and uh, refer it again try jenkins uh, with your own uh, hands try to play with it uh, try to install plugins try to create a like you know a job so that would uh, give more confidence and you know uh, help you retaining information uh, longer so any questions uh, uh any queries which i can help okay uh so i think uh, there are no queries or uh, questions uh, in that case uh, we can uh close for uh, today's session uh so feel uh, free uh, to uh, contact us uh, you can visit our site edevopsguru.com uh let us know your feedback uh, sir and uh, let your friends or your friend circle know about this uh, webinar uh, you can share the uh, video Uh, you can tell tell them about our uh, coming uh, webinars so it might help uh, uh, gaining uh, new knowledge new information okay thank you
थैंक यू एवरीबडी है